So if you're engraving photographs, you're probably gonna go find a YouTube video that'll tell you how to do this. And it's gonna say, open the image properties and adjust the brightness, contrast, gamma, and then go into the settings for the image and set the resolution to something ridiculously high. And things are gonna be wonderful. The reality is that's a terrible way to start. In this video, I'm gonna let you in on a few secrets that I do and I'll make better images without touching brightness, contrast, or gamma. So let's get going. So I'm just gonna dive right in here because I wanna move along pretty quickly. When you're engraving perfect photographs, there's two things you need to understand. First thing you need to understand is how a photograph is engraved. Now, what Lightburn does if you drop a, a PNG file of a photograph in there is it breaks it down into single lines when you start engraving. And lines typically go, go from left to right and it'll move the laser head along and it will adjust the intensity of the light depending on the brightness of that particular piece of the photograph. When it gets to the end, it steps to the next line and it will do that successively until it builds the whole photograph. That's photographs. The second thing you need to understand is the laser itself and specifically the spot size. Now a typical 20 to 30 watt laser like this Algo Laser Delta behind me is usually around 0.08 millimeters in the horizontal direction. So the width of the beam is about 0.08 millimeters and the height of the beam is typically around 0.1 millimeters. And those are the numbers I'm gonna use for, for this video. You will have to adjust these depending on your specific laser though. So keep that in mind. So now that we have those two pieces of information, what can we do with it? Well, we're gonna start with the beam size. So the 0.08 millimeter number is the width of the beam. And for the sake of this video, I'll say that there's nothing we can do about that one. So the laser is gonna scan from left to right and draw a single line in our photograph, and it does what it does. It's the 0.1 millimeter number that I wanna talk about, which is the height of the beam. And what that one defines is the resolution of your photograph. So how many lines do you get? And if you use 0.1, that means every millimeter of height in your photograph is 10 lines. Now, the reality is you can have more lines than that, or you can have fewer lines than that. And we'll talk about that, but you have to understand why you would want either. Sometimes you do it intentionally, but sometimes it's just a gross mistake. All right, so for the rest of this video, I'm gonna start with an example and work that example through step by step. Normally you wouldn't do this, but I'm gonna take you through the thought process by changing a single parameter and then doing another engrave. And you'll see the, the subtle differences that happen at each step. And then at the end, you'll see, hey, this is actually a fantastic photograph. So uh, we'll jump into Lightburn and I'll show you an example. Now I went out to Google Images and I found this really nice photograph of Audrey Hepburn. Now as an aside, if you don't know who Audrey Hepburn is, she was an actress from the 50s, did some really good movies, go watch those. Uh, but we're back to our regular program. So I loaded this into Lightburn and I'm now gonna look at the settings. And here's the settings. Now I pre-populated these because I, in full disclosure, I've used this laser with MDF material, which is the material I'm gonna use for this. And I happen to know on that material, a good engraving speed is about 190 millimeters a second. And a good starting point for maximum power is about 30. Now you might notice that the minimum power here is set to five rather than 0%. And that's because I happen to know that this laser doesn't really get excited to do any kind of work until you ask for about 5% power. Think of these two values as the, the maximum is the blackest black power you're going to have and the minimum power is the power you're gonna to use to engrave the whitest white. Now, that isn't zero, it could be zero, but then you're gonna skew everything to the low end, so there'll be lots of places where there's no engraving at all. So what you really want this value set to is just the point where the laser starts interacting with the material, and in this case, that's about 5%. If you really wanna understand these, I did a video on material settings, uh, and I'll put a link up above here, go watch that and you'll understand it a little better. Now, the next thing to look at here is the interval and it's currently set to 0 0.1, which, is, uh, which I've set because that is the height of our, our spot size for the laser. And we'll use this as quote unquote, the ideal setting for, for the laser when we're doing an engraving, but I'm gonna try both extremes as well. I'm gonna start with something high, like, uh, like 400 lines per inch and you'll notice if I, I change it there, it'll, it'll change the interval. And similarly, if I change the interval, it'll change here. So you can work in either measurement if you want. So 400 dots per inch is roughly 0.06 millimeters. 
And I'll use that, I'll do an engraving and we'll take a look at it. And really what this one is, is gonna be almost twice the resolution of our laser. So you're gonna see lots of overlap and that'll have the side effect of making the output dark. And here's our first example. I actually used 0.06 just to make the number look clean. That's 423 lines per inch. You can see the image, you can understand what it is, but it's very dark. And that's because the lines are overlapping by almost 50%. So you lose some of that detail in, in her hair. Uh, face details are, are really not great. You do get some garment detail, but it's not fantastic. Now this is the, this number, this 400 and roughly 400 lines per inch is what people will tell you to use sometimes. And then they'll tell you to correct it with brightness and contrast. And you can do that, but you just will never get it right. Uh, and that's because you're losing 50% of your detail. Here's the second result. We went to the other extreme. So we're down to 181 lines per inch. And uh, that's a 0.14 millimeter interval. So the laser is stepping 0.14 millimeters for each line it's engraving. That means that there's 0.03 millimeters of gap in between the lines. Now the image itself looks better. You can see the face is clearer. You can, you can see the, the reflection in the hair and you lose a, a bit of detail in the clothing, but that's kind of to be expected. And that's the layer. Now you can actually see uh, the lines in here because the, the, the engraving's too far apart. So better image from a visual perspective, but not exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for that Goldilocks moment where it's just right. And here's that ideal image. It's 0.1 millimeter interval, which is roughly the size of our beam, 254 milli, uh, lines per inch. And you can see we get really good detail. We don't have any of those lines in between the, the, the engraving. All in all, it's probably a perfect image. And this is kind of the goal you want to get. You can actually make out the gray detail in the background. She's against a brick wall here and you can even make out most of the detail in the clothing. So now that I have the interval set to 0.1, which is kind of that ideal measurement, I took this same example and I put it on a piece of Baltic birch plywood. And the only change I made was I increased the, the maximum power from that 30% up to 60%. And that just allowed me to get a little darker on wood. Now you can see the details in her hair here are perfect. Uh, you even get a little more detail in her clothing just by the virtue of this material. All in all, I am super happy with this and uh, you should be too if you're doing engraving on, on wood. All right, so you saw three or four good images here and Throughout the entire video, I didn't touch the speed. It was stated at 190 millimeters a second. The power was at 30, except for the last one on plywood, which generally needs a little more power. So I changed it for that. But I didn't tweak the, the, the settings too much. I definitely didn't touch brightness, contrast, or gamma. The message here is, adjust the laser, not the image. And you can adjust the image later if you if you do that, that final engraving on wood and maybe you say, well, her hair's a little bit dark. You can certainly uh, reduce the power a bit, but there might be a time where, where the adjustments need to be, be done, but adjusting brightness and contrast shouldn't be your first move. That should be your last move. As I said, adjust the laser first. Anyway, we'll wind down. So hopefully you got something out of this and get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.